I would like to start the podcast different this time. Let's do a different intro. I'm going to open up with a question. What is the worst game you've ever played? Ooh. I think I know Tom's, even if he's not willing to say it. What? No, I'm no. <laughs> I was the what? I was about Superman? to say I was about to yeah. say Superman 64. But yep. that said, like, even though it was a trash game, and trust me, I've played E.T. Like, I don't, I have trouble <laughs> considering, like, E.T. on 2600 a bad game. Because it's bad, but it's mostly bad because it's just not finished. Like, there's just nothing there. Um, Superman, though, is clearly trying to be a finished product. Uh, and it was just bad, although I did find fun in it. Um, me and my brother used to fly around the, the shitty, like, super fog-laden city uh, and act like we were like flying around people and picking people up to go grocery shopping. And it was it was fun. Like we bonded over the shittiness of that game. Uh, so it, it still kind of holds a special place in my heart, even though, yeah, it's literally the worst thing I've ever played. OK, so maybe I, like worst game, like critically aside, what game did you have the worst time playing? <laughs> like what was your just most oh. miserable gaming experience <clears throat> um, game wise? man i or does anything come to mind <laughs> yes yes it does <laughs> oh. okay um literally 50 percent of my time in dota 2 it is the worst <laughs> thing in the world i don't want to play it again i don't want to look at it uh, here i we see go. that icon in steam and i'm just like god i fucking hate dota i hover over that uninstalled link i'm like mm. I'll play one more. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to play one more. I feel like we've had this conversation. It's like fucking heroin. Every podcast I for think... the past six or seven in a row. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> I, I think Goddess for me was like. Goddess? It's like a god simulator. And it was looked really good. But when I actually started to play it, like it just wasn't there for me. Like I was mm -hmm. just. It was also, I think, a lot of letdown because I was hoping for something that just oh, wasn't there. Okay. Yeah, that Ooh. makes a big difference. But generally, guess, like if I don't like a game, I'm not someone beholden to this idea. I bought it. I need to play it. If I don't like it, I'm getting the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish. I'll, I'll give a game a fair shot oh, most of the time. I'll, I'll give it a shot. But after like a few hours, if I'm still like, man, this, this kind of sucks. Yeah, it, after a few am hours. Am I playing yeah, something sure. or am I like working at something here? Am I desperately trying to make me myself feel like my money was worth it? Exactly. Like I, I don't play those games anymore. Like I'm not, I'm not a kid that can't afford to buy a game at this point. So I don't feel like buying a game makes me beholden to enjoying the game. Yeah. Like true. when you're in high school and you're like doing lunch money change for like months to be able to get like the new halo that just dropped or something. Like you want that game to be good because you're not buying another game for a few months. Yeah. At best. <laughs> so um... like I, I, I'm not at that stage anymore, so I'll leave them if I don't like them. It depends on the game for me. Like, if it's if it's a series I desperately love, chances are I'll go through it. Um, if it's particularly bad, I will I will drop it. But it, it takes it takes a game being really, really, really fucking bad if it's in a series I love for me to just drop it completely. Skyward Sword was that way for me. Like, I love Zelda. I love almost every single Zelda game I've ever played, uh, despite their their obvious flaws. But Skyward Sword was bad enough that I just fucking quit. Um, I kind of got a hot take on that, actually. Um, it just now dawned on me. Borderlands 3. Did not enjoy yeah. that game. Yeah, same. Like, I beat it. I did not enjoy that game. But you beat it and you it didn't was, enjoy it? No. Like, I was in that. This is one of the odd times where I stuck with it because I felt like maybe there's going to be something I like. Like, I know I like some of the end game in the first one. Like, I never got hooked. <clears throat> yeah. It, it never got into me. And part of it is possibly the Duke Nukem Forever to Duke Nukem 3D. It's the idea that you had this style of uh, humor. People loved it at the time. Like, you're talking 2011, 2010 different culture, different atmosphere. It was, and I was younger. I mean, mm -hmm. then you fast forward to Borderlands three. Like I wasn't finding it as clever. I wasn't finding it as funny. I was finding it a little dry. I found it to be um, like immature, like not in a good way, immature, like 
immature, like Rick and Morty's immature, but it can be done <laughs> in a tasteful way. Ooh. I I just didn't enjoy the game. And the bad thing is, it is Borderlands through and through. Like, I don't think I would enjoy Borderlands 2 at this point. We really should go back and try that again to see see if Borderlands 2 holds up. Because I've gone back to 1. And 1, I feel like it's still shit tons of fun. Um, but I, I agree with you. Like, some games just... you They don't make it out of that kind of childhood or young adult or adolescent phase. Um, I remember, because uh, I've, I've been going through, thanks to... Uh, Thanks to you know lockdowns and pandemic and stuff, I've been watching a lot of old movies and introducing Renee to like a lot of the movies and shit I grew up with. And let me tell you, nothing is is quite mortifying. Like you know, hanging hanging out with your significant other, you're like, yeah, this this was like a great like sci-fi movie back in the day because we were watching uh, what was it? We we're watching Lost in Space. And you know the movie when it came out, it was sci-fi schlock like it was just fucking stupid popcorn movie and it was really really kind of awkward and cringy but when i was a kid that was like the coolest shit ever <laughs> and i'm watching it now as an adult and i'm like oh, oh no oh like we it's a, we literally turned it off halfway through it was that bad it's a dangerous game man revisiting things of the past it's dangerous yeah yeah, yeah. also that when you excitedly show somebody something and they just do not like it it's a horrible <laughs> feeling that is such an awful yep. feeling i'm afraid to go back and play jackal for the nes for that reason i hold that <laughs> game in such high regard and love it i think it would still hold up but man i don't know so same with um, like ninja gaiden on the xbox at this point yeah so um oh what was it fuck i just had something and now i completely lost it there's something else but what about anyway. you, Adam? You haven't really what? put forth an answer on that yet. Oh, the worst the worst game I've ever played? Um, yeah. It was a gift from Tater. Do you me. Ask? The old roommate. Oh, okay. It, it was one of the uh, how bad of a gift can we make games? It might have been. I don't know. But he just randomly, <laughs> he didn't say anything at all. He just gifted me a game called McPixel. <laughs> and it is the worst thing I've ever played in my entire life. <laughs> it was so it was so bad. Like for for one, it's I don't think it was supposed to be good. Like it's one of those games, like Bad Rats or something. But yeah, it, it all looks like it was drawn in Microsoft Paint, and it's like this fast gameplay where there's just a bunch of random scenarios and you have to figure out how to not die in it. But I couldn't even figure out how to play. It was so bad. Like, I didn't know the controls or what anything did, or like, it was just, it was immediately confusing and not good and awful. It was just, no, 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 no. I think I put I like I've talked two minutes into the game and I was, I was over it. I think I brought, I think... talked this about Cast before, but that actually reminds me of another bad game I played was a lawn mowing simulator that, that looked like it was relaxing as fuck. I think I remember you it talking like about it was... this drawn by like a ninth grade computer art student so it looks awful <laughs> the gameplay looked like it was designed by a ninth grade like computer game design like it was awful there was nothing relaxing you just pulled out a riding lawnmower and just mowed mm -hmm. it had an arbitrary ass point system no upgrades no nothing it was just awful and to the developers of mcpixel in this lawn mowing game we're sorry <laughs> um, I'm not. You can't. I'm sorry. I'm Maybe they put their heart and soul into that, Rick. Listen, if you put your heart and soul into something and it still stinks, it doesn't change the outcome. I feel bad that you put your heart and soul into it, but if it stinks, it stinks. It's like, okay, a, a game, a sports. Yeah, you tried your hardest. You still lost, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I've got a tie for most uh, most disappointing game. Uh, the first one, which I've ranted about ad nauseum, uh, is Fable, right? Mm -hmm. I listened to the marketing. I listened to Peter Molyneux. Mm -hmm. I was ready for an RPG, an RPG to change and end all RPGs. And what I got was a shitty, mostly generic action adventure game. Um, yeah, but if you did bad stuff, you started to grow horns. And if you did good stuff, you were glowing. Oh, yeah, shit. Hey. Never I... mind. Never mind. That's game of the year right there. 100%. I actually really enjoyed <laughs> the Fable, complex though. moral system. 
I <laughs> murder children, I, get horns, <laughs> do all the good first things. Playthrough. Maybe my first playthrough has a lot to do with why I hate it, but I I was confused on the buttons and I accidentally kicked the chicken. And then for the next 30 some hours, I was named Chicken Kicker <laughs> by all of the villagers. And I went out of my way to be super fucking evil and started like murdering people. But it didn't matter that like I was you know, Tom, the slaughterer of helpless infants. I was still fucking chicken kicker to everyone in that goddamn town. <laughs> you so... got middle school bullied by the game. <laughs> exactly. But I'm pretty sure that you missed a system in that game then. No, I there know. A... I know that, like, depending on what you do, they will give you certain nicknames and call you no, certain things. There's a title you choose, and people refer to you by the title. Chicken kicker is one of the titles. Then I, I was chicken the kicker one. for the whole fucking game. <laughs> it was, chicken it was kicker, God destroyer of worlds. <laughs> but, what, but the one thing that did bug me about that game is how arbitrary all the stuff was. Like, I like the fact that good, bad, scale, whatever. But what sucked is at the very end, after you beat the final boss, you're given a yes or no question. And depending on how you answer that, you either go all the way good or all the way bad. Oh. <laughs> None of your prior decisions matter. I dislike that stuff a lot. Like, yeah. if you're going to feed me choice in um, agency, have it mean something. Well, Don't, it's, like the, like, it's like the Entron or ending Omatic in every single fucking Bioware game and all the new Deus Ex games, right? You spend your entire playthrough making really nuanced and complex choices. And at the end of the game, you get three fucking buttons that changed the color of some of the, the cinematics in the ending of the game. That's it. Welcome <laughs> to Mass Effect. You put 200 hours in your heart and soul and you literally sobbed and cried over this game and these characters. Do you want the blue ending, the green ending, or the red ending? <laughs> and by the way, they're all the same fucking ending. It's just different colors. Speaking of, I'm going to be playing I, that, um, remaster when it comes uh, out on PC. I absolutely will be. I, I love Mass Effect, but you got to be in it for the journey and not the destination because fuck was that destination kind of kind of shit. And I, <laughs> I think that's also a good example of you could be very critical about aspects of a game and still enjoy it. Yeah, like don't I love Mass Effect. It is one of my favorite game series of all time. Like Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 are just like some of the peaks of Western RPG design. But that ending is one of the worst things I've experienced in gaming, especially for the time commitment. Um, the other disappointing game, which I, I don't think I've talked to a whole lot, um, is Red Faction 2. And there's a story oh, behind this. Oh, yeah. I loved Red Faction 2. That, I ed, loved that, that game. That campaign for that game built that up to be possibly the best shooter at the time ever it's it's worse it's it's even worse because i never got into the ad campaign instead i loved red faction one red faction two wasn't even like a blip on my radar i didn't know it was a thing but i fucking loved it because like even though geomod was like pretty i don't know i want to it's it's kind of a gimmick like it's used in a couple cool ways i was expecting the second game to be like geomod but nuts and Look at all the cool stuff you can do again. Like I was, I was ready for them to take the core feature of that game and do something amazing with it. I didn't even buy this thing. My dad came home from a business trip, sat it on the kitchen table and said, Hey, I've been gone for four weeks. Here's something I got for you. And, uh, I really, really wanted to love it, but God, it was one of the most miserable, generic, shitty first person shooters <laughs> I have ever played. And on the back of the box, they had like, some no-name fucking gaming magazine say it's the halo killer to end all halo <laughs> killers because it had offhand grenade deployment and you know that's all you needed to be a halo killer back in the day uh, everything that was the marketing campaign for everything it's the yeah, next halo, halo killer, halo killer. <laughs> it fucking was kill so zone, dude. fucking bad everything about that game was so goddamn awful even geomod was limited to Oh hey, there's a wall here, but if you throw enough grenades, you can you can shoot the guy that's ducking behind it. And that's that's the whole game. Also, I have there, there good memories of Red Faction that... too, and they're all multiplayer. <laughs> and we would I actually use the we would use the rocket launcher to 
like mod the geography of a, a place and make like these caves and we would take turns like trying to invade each other's like little fortress that we <laughs> carved out with our rocket launcher That's multiplayer pretty- can gloss over airs of many many games oh yeah, oh, yeah. moon base alpha was a fantastic experience as an it was a oh, terrible yeah. game <laughs> but it was a great well, experience there was something buried in tom's story i want to touch on Dude, your dad is rad for getting you that kind of gift. Like, I'm used to the idea, like, you get a fucking t-shirt or some ceramic koala they got at a truck stop while they were gone. No, nah, dog. Your dad just comes home like, he likes video games. I'm getting him a game. Yeah. No, nah, he, he That's cool. knew what we liked. And uh, what's what's kind of cool is, like, he would browse around gaming magazines. So, like, he knew the names. He, he knew, like, what was getting high reviews and what wasn't. Unfortunately, wow. the only thing he had read about Red Faction was, hey, there's a second one. And Tom really liked the first one. I'm going to get him that one. So, uh, like, the gift came from, like, a really a good nice place. place. Yeah. yeah, like, he absolutely did everything right. Uh, except, you know, Red Faction 2 was a piece of shit, and he wasn't aware of that. He did everything right, but make the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if my, my lazy-ass father would have just fucking got off his ass, stopped going to work, and built Red Faction 2 from the ground up to be in a better spot, I wouldn't be having this conversation right now. But no, Dad had bills to pay and mouths to feed. (laughs) Wonderful. Uh, Fuck. And welcome to the 72 PC Podcast, the only (laughs) podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. (laughs) With us this week, we have a very angry Tom. (laughs) <laughs> you're welcome uh, also to be clear I was never given a ceramic panda from a truck stop it just kind of came to my mind as Those some the generic words. ass gift someone might get <laughs> no, now to self, do not ceramic panda from return a truck some stop. ceramic panda <laughs> I'm going to find you God. a goddamn ceramic panda we're gonna send I was like gonna say, I swear to God, if I have them. one of my doorstops, there will be a fucking return address on that shit. What if you have 30 of them on? Oh god, I'll line the next stream with them. Uh so no. Adam, I think I think we got something to do then. No. That's what I'm hearing. No. Yeah. I fucking hate you guys. Anyway, how's Eric hates, week? Eric already hates Christmas, so or birthdays and stuff. So maybe for his birthday we'll get him a whole bunch of gifts because he loves gifts. I hate you guys and I hate I gotta, that. I just I, that. I gotta hit him with those what a saves. Uh, anyways, I cut somebody off. I'm sorry. What were you saying? How's y'all's week? No, I, I don't think shit. Just that. No. I don't yeah, know fine. what Good. kind of week I had. I played a lot I of games this week. I wasn't outlandishly busy. Whoa. I yeah. think that transferred Mine's, to Irk. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Mine blew ass, man. I had like a 17 hour day or something like that one day. Jesus fuck. Like oh, I, I, I'm behind, or there's a project that's behind working a lot on it. And to be clear, everyone knows pretty much where we work, not naming it, but they pretty much know not the norm happens to maybe like once a year, this might happen. Yeah. And it, it's cleared up and everything's good now, but fuck the first part of this week sucks. Oh. Like yep. it's the first time in my life. I've actually physically felt stress. Like, I'm typically pretty low-key. Shit doesn't bother me, stress me out. Nah, dog, this got me this time. Everybody that has sucks. a breaking point. Indeed. But we're here. It's better. We're good. Yeah, <laughs> now we're just chilling and playing video games and talking about them. Yep. And you know how I relieve my stress? I played Dota. Oh, That's, I'm so sorry. Um, out of eight matches, one seven. You know that mental health is important too, right? Oh, Scott and I was on a fucking tear, so it was a great mental health. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, take, so you didn't have another teammate that um, just decided to do whatever they wanted and then blame you when it didn't work out? Uh, no. no, we have lots of those all the time. Okay. Well, not during this stretch, though. During the stress, it was just um, <laughs> Scott and I and Alex Scott and I, I think, and it went well. Nice. Tom got in on some later in the week that went well, and then we yep. had the stretch. The stretch. And it Eventually, systems go back to normal. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Dota giveth, Dota taketh. But, yeah. So I, I am endlessly confused on 
Dota 2's matchmaking. So, you know, Irk and Scott and I have, you know, hundreds of hours, what, thousands of hours in the game at this point? Yeah. Um, and we get match made a lot with people who have never played the game before. Like, literally, they're like, hey, um, what button do I push for this? Or do I, how do I use this hero? Or, like really weird questions like really weird questions like if you were watching somebody play rocket league and they never flipped whatsoever at all you would assume this person has never played rocket league before people uh. are making those caliber of mistakes um or, or just not playing at that caliber in the dota matches we're in and i just don't know how it happens and it keeps happening it wasn't like a onesie twosie thing like this is Almost every night we'll have one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. But, but it's been going better. It's been going well. I've been getting better. I've been getting a lot better. So I'm happy about that. I feel the play getting better. I'm able to pick up different heroes I normally don't play and play them effectively because I'm used to the position. I'm used to what I do. So I can kind of transfer some of that to other people. Mm. So, yeah. Um so, if you don't mind me being so bold, Adam, I want to hear about Little Nightmares too. Yeah, that shit looks awesome. It's really good. It's really good. I liked it more than the first one, even. Which is, it's always nice when it when a sequel is able to deliver. Um, yeah. So, for those who haven't played Little Nightmares, it is a, um, I guess a three D puzzle platformer with a heavy focus on like a horror atmosphere and story um, and absolutely no dialogue. They are very much the environmental storytelling kind of thing. There is not one word of dialogue in both games. That's awesome. Hmm. Um, For a horror game. I really like that approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Um, and it, it really, really shines in the, like the art design and the atmosphere, uh, the soundtrack is really good. They they definitely upped the visuals on the second one, which was a nice touch. And the game as a whole just feels bigger. And um, like the world itself feels bigger. And they added some some different mechanics and stuff. It's it's one of those where they, they change just enough stuff to, to make it feel fresh, but it still very much feels like, you know, little nightmares. That's always nice. Yeah. Um, if uh, I had, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You good? Oh, to say, if I had one criticism of the game, is that the controls are a little clunky. So, and it maybe is a little bit more apparent in the second one because there are actual um, segments of combat where you need a little bit of precision mechanically, and that could be a little bit frustrating with the kind of slow, clunky controls, but. Um, overall though, that's not hugely detrimental. Like I think the, the narrative and the atmosphere and the world itself and the way it's presented is it just far outweighs, you know, the, so the small you issues. saying that the controls for combat are clunky surprises me. Like I would be, wouldn't be surprised with them not being good, but since there's uh, some platforming in that game, I'm not used to the idea of a game being like a D or a good game that's a platformer and having something feel clunky because typically clunky controls the platformers is a no go. I mean, Especially even 3D space. I mean, the movement is kind of slow and sluggish anyway. Um, so there are even situations where the the clunky ish movement um, does affect a platformer section or two. Okay. Um, ma mainly with uh. Like because of the perspective, sometimes it can be hard to tell exactly what depth your character needs to be at, and then also control the angle properly for that depth to not fall to your death and stuff. So there, there are yeah. some situations like that that can happen. But uh, I don't know if I was under a rock, but I didn't realize that there was actual th depth and three Dness mm, to yeah. that game. Like I thought, Little Nightmares was just like one of those real pretty three D art styles that's actually a two D platform. No, it's it's 3D. A lot of it is from that side angle, like a side scroller. A ton of it is like, you know, inside or limbo or one of those. Yeah. But no, there are definitely 
there's definitely 3D depth to many of the places. And then also some sections that are just straight up, like they change the camera from uh, side to side to where you're like running at the camera or away from it and stuff. Like they they change it up for sure depending on the scene itself. But it's not like, you know, camera always behind you Mario 64 type of 3D platformer, but there are there are definitely 3D elements for sure. Not. Um, but yeah, uh, this one was also pretty dang creepy. Um, much like the first one, there are some spots where I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's the thing, cool. Uh, can't wait to deal with that. Uh, <laughs> um, and, there's a clip you put in general of Jake yeah, streaming this. That yep. was excellent. Yeah, that that particular spot was definitely one of those moments where I was like, oh, yeah, of course. Of course they make you do this in that way. But um, but no, so they do a really good job um, just creating this really disturbing just world and atmosphere. And I think it contrasts really well because you're playing as a little kid. So you've got like this this sort of wholesome, you know, main character, innocent child. And this world that is just like <laughs> really disturbing and, you know. It just it amplifies that I think when you're playing as a little kid in this big world and some weird deformed monstrosity you know grabs you <laughs> and kills you or when you like miss your jump and you fall to your death and you hear like the like the impact on the ground and your character just goes limp and you're like Ooh. Jesus Christ what the fuck you're a yeah. thud really yeah like it's you, you might play as a kid but this is not like a a kid's game. So that, that sounds a whole lot like uh, like inside. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of of similarities between the two games. Not that they're, it doesn't feel like a knockoff or anything. Like they're they're still Ooh. have tons of differences and stuff. But you could see that they're they're kind of in the same sphere. Yeah. Lots of environmental storytelling, te- uh, focus on the world and the atmosphere, platforming puzzles. You know, it's cool yeah. stuff. I will say the the little nightmares narrative is a little bit more, um, or a little less like, <laughs> uh, and I don't know, like obtuse, I guess. Like the inside narrative is very much like, what, what happened? What's going on? What? Mm-hmm. What did that mean? Uh, a little nightmare still has some of that stuff, but it's definitely a little more uh, immediately apparent and cohesive what's happening, for the most part. It doesn't beat you over the head with we're being clever. Um, no, I mean, I don't even know the inside was like that. It's just more. So there's like open to interpretation and then there's open to interpretation, right? <laughs> and inside is very, very much open to interpretation. Heavy, ah. heavy, heavy, heavy. <clears throat> I don't. So like... how long did it take you to get through? Uh, it's, it's not a long game. I think it was just under six hours for me. Okay. And that's not the completionist find all the collectible things. It's just like, yeah, playing through casually and and seeing what's going on. One little touch they did add, um, there's collectible hats. You can change the way your main character looks with different hats. You find them in the game. Uh, In a horror game? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. I mean, why I not? I mean, you play as sure. a little kid. <laughs> a little kid has different hats. I mean, the the default hat is literally a paper bag with eye holes cut in it. There's just something wrong with that. I don't know. It, it kind of fits with the... I mean, it's a horror game, but it's also got the sort of like... Much more dark, twisted, disturbing, like Tim Burton kind of vibe to it. Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of yeah. that... Um, I don't know what to call it. Uh, quirk- quirkiness isn't really the right word, but it's, you know what I mean? Kind of like b- uh, being slightly bizarre-ish? Or... Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. But yeah, Little Nightmares was really, really good. I was impressed. I, I love it. A well, good deal. Yeah, I-, I saw the trailer for it a while back. I'm like, that does look good. Mm-hmm. It could, I could see that being a game I would enjoy playing. I think you would enjoy it, yeah, for sure. 
Tom would enjoy it too. I don't know why, but I, I kind of want to play a little bit of horror. Like right now, like for some reason, my brains is like, man, phasmophobia sounds fun. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I would rock some phasmophobia tonight. Have you played the latest update? No. Oh, we should we should do that tonight. <laughs> it is it is only a good time. Okay. It, it re scared me, I, and I, I don't oh, want to dive into it because we went we went over it uh, last show or two shows ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, with like door slamming and stuff. Yeah, 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 like it. Uh, I was away for long enough, and they've made enough changes that yeah, it does scare me again. <laughs> well, That's good. I might be turning lights off and taking a break from Dota tonight to do that. There you yeah. Go. And if you are interested in Little Nightmares, Eric, I think that would be a game that that you would enjoy anyway. And then if you're also kind of craving the horror thing, it's it's there as well. Yeah. Like I've I feel bad because like I've never played Limbo. Like I've played a little bit of the demo that everyone did with the 360 back mm. in the day. And I've never played Inside. And it's not because mm. I don't want to. It's just I've never gotten around to it. Because mm -hmm. I know that they're good games. I know I'd probably enjoy them. Like Limbo, that first reveal in the demo with the spider leg. Sorry, I'm not <laughs> afraid of that spoiler. God. The game's fucking howled. Dude, <laughs> yeah. that was just so like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it really was. Every, like, okay, that, the spider moment, um, to me, is actually, it was scarier to me than anything I saw in Limbo. Like, don't get me wrong, Limbo was kind of creepy, but that spider thing, man, and mm -hmm. that death, like, nah, nothing really measured up to that. That spider scene was probably one of the few times in gaming where I enjoyed a cheap, you're going to die here because you don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Which kind of happens a lot in Limbo. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm okay with that as a teaching mechanic the very first time. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I've got on a tangent about that in the past. It's just I think it's a dangerous mechanic for developers to use. Yeah, you yeah. definitely don't want to. Limbo, Limbo just like did it. Limbo just did it very fucking well with that scene. Yeah, and it can be done well because forcing the character to die, for one, um, you learn something, and then two, seeing your character die might be the the sort of impact you want. Like in Little Nightmares, seeing the child like yeah. get caught in a trap or something like that's disturbing, and I think that adds to the the sort of it lets you know like oh it's gonna be this type of game. I do yeah. think it's a little dangerous though because in in horror games, especially in horror games, when you die too often in a mm -hmm. horror game, it you have that real yep. thin line between <laughs> scary and frustrating. Yes. And if you ever touch the frustrating side, you have lost all the horror. And it takes you a long time to build that back up. Um, that, that was my uh, yeah. my issue with um, Soma before the, the mod to make the enemies, you know, non-lethal, is that I kept dying in a really, like, shitty maze to a, an enemy that was really scary, but now it's just like, oh, look, <laughs> there's bob again bob's gonna kill me because i can't figure out where the fuck to go here look i'm dead thanks bob. <laughs> it was no longer scary it was just kind of yeah. fucking stupid this um, is bob yeah but like for some reason you know i i think those kind of deaths in in inside and play dead's other stuff didn't ever hit that frustrating point at yeah. least to me well, too, I think games like Inside are less concerned with actually scaring you and more that, the, uh, you know, it's a puzzle platformer that happens yeah. to be in a setting that is thematically, you know, horror creepy. adjacent or creepy or unsettling. But the, yeah. the goal of the game isn't to, you know, necessarily scare you or play with that, you know, fear, flight or fight response kind of thing that the, most horror games kind of go for. Even I little, think unsettling is the best word you could use to describe yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good one. Even Little Nightmares to a degree. I mean, it definitely leans more into the trying to scare the player sometimes and creating tension. There are like chase sequences and things like that. But it's not like... It's not going for that kind of emergent 
gameplay horror that a lot of like the the first person hide and seek style gameplay games go for that where i think that is exactly the type of game where dying too much is really detrimental to that yeah yeah it's fear of the unknown and when you know it happens when this other thing happens it becomes a lot less scary over time yep which can be detrimental yeah. Um, keep it rolling. Um, <laughs> unless there was anything else you wanted to say about Little Nightmares? Um, no, I don't think so. I just I was really, really impressed with it. I liked it a lot. That Play series it. at some point is a series I will get to. I have no doubt at some point. I it's not a big time those. commitment. I mean, I think the first one's only maybe three hours. And then the second one is like five to six hours. So... You can get through them in a weekend, easy. But then I can't Dota and Tarky. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I well, still play. I still play Tarkov. Ha, how's your Tarkov been going? Uh, do you tell me? I mean, the only raids I've played have been with you <laughs> the past couple weeks. Uh, no, it's been going I'm fine. Hard. I've just been collecting Bitcoin and getting richer without playing really. And then me and you played some raids today. It went okay. Yeah, I've personally I've grinded up to the point where I'm doing things I've never done. Like I still have some quest lines I've been further in, but like I have a Bitcoin farm now. I've never mm -hmm. had that before. Yeah. I'm making money out of hideout. I've never done that before. Like I'm getting to the point where I have to leave my generator on. I can't turn it off. Like this is all new territory to me. So it's really kind of cool. Um by this time next week, I should be to the point where I can just play whatever the fuck I want for a while and not have to worry about money as much, which will be nice. So yeah. it's always nice. Yeah. The raids themselves have been hit and miss. I, I actually ran a couple scavs through the week. I have one scav where I killed a huge juice boy. I was really excited. Like he ended up running out of ammo. He must have fought a fuck ton through the raid. Oh. Gets to the point where well. both on the side of the rock. I'm reloading. <clears throat> And I have broken legs, both of them. So I'm trying to go around left side really slow. He's going around the right side. Eventually I get back to him and I realize he has his fucking hatchet out. And he's oh, chasing no. me with his fucking hatchet. <laughs> I kill him. I have five health left. And before I could search his body for meds, I die. Oh, no. Oh, that sucks. I was going to ask. You said he ran out of ammo and was running at you with the hatchet. I didn't know if you had yours out too. You have a good old-fashioned hobo fight. No. I, I still had my AKM that I had. I like, love. I, I've seen I started clips of those. Some, yeah, and he had good shit. I I just don't understand. Like he had two guns. Uh, it was an M4 and something else. I'm like, I don't know how you run out of ammo in a raid. Uh, if you don't bring that much in, and you fight a lot of people, and you're not, you know, you're not scared about holding left click. I mean, it goes pretty quick. Ah, uh, true, true. But no, I mean, it's all in all raids have been good. I've been getting more aggressive, killing more people. Makes it a little more fun. Or a different type of fun, I should say. Yeah. A little more it stressful, is. though, too. Yep. Yep. That's, that's Tarkov. <laughs> that is Tarky. So what have you been up to, Tom? We haven't got to anything you've been doing this week. <sighs> grinding. Always grinding. grinding. Been, uh, been pumping up my rookie numbers. Um, I am grinding Beat Saber again. Yeah. So I'm trying to do at least a half hour every day, um, which has been going really well. Um, you know, if I do a half an hour tomorrow, I think I've got the whole week, maybe less than that. Anyway, nice. like at least five days. Um, so yeah, been uh, you know making new records, trying out some new mods. Um, it's just been a shit ton of fun. Um, yeah, yeah, it's all all the same stuff. Um, played a little bit of Half Life Two, a little bit of Alex. Um, I think the only new thing I've got on on here, uh, other than my Dota Two uh, drug addiction, is um, Propagation VR. Uh, oh, is that so, your horror? Is that the horror shitter? Yeah, the horror shitter. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were gonna get that goal anyway um so magic dave brought this up uh it is a co-op vr horror shooter 
um, it's a wave shooter, so you stand in one place and enemies come at you and you have to shoot them. Um, it was kind of fun. So the game itself is free to play. Um, the multiplayer is like an $8 DLC. So that's fine. I feel like I got my $8 out of it. There's really not a whole lot of content. Dave and I blew through it in like, I want to say an hour. Um, <laughs> so there's there's really not not a whole lot to it but you can see where they're where they're going it was pretty fun um it's not just like a zombie wave shooter you have everything from like zombies to like here's like a weird creature thing to here's a spider that if you don't hit it in the face and you hit it in the body it explodes into baby spiders which is just not fun for anybody um it was it was okay um not the scariest game I've played, but if you want a little bit of spook in your, your VR wave shooter, you could do worse than Propagation. Um, I'm interested to see where it goes from here, but you know, right now with the one level in early access, there's not a whole lot. So uh, if you're desperate for VR content, cool. If you're not, go ahead and save your pennies. I, so I was actually going to say, like, in the era of the... Um the tech demo VR game. So like the first two years of VR of the Vive, like that is what 90% of your games were, were fucking tech demos. Yeah. This, from what you've just explained, this feels like it would have been at home. I'm yeah. surprised someone is trying to make one of these now. Does it do anything novel? Not really. Um, but that said, um, one thing that uh, that has been missing for a while in, in VR, as far as new releases go, are those kind of wave shooters. It seemed like everyone and their mother were making VR wave shooters back when the Vive was new. Um, like, other than Serious Sam, there hasn't really been anything recent, uh, at least not anything that I've played or uh, heard about readily. So it is kind of filling that niche as something new in, in that genre. But you're exactly right. It would fit in perfectly with the first two years of the Vive. Um, yeah, it's it's fine. If you wanted to check out the single player again, that's going to be free. You only pay for the multiplayer, uh, which I think is kind of neat. Like, if, if you just want to try it out to see if you'll like it at all, sure, you're not losing anything except time. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I will definitely play it again. Uh, just when they've got more content. It's an interesting model. Yeah. Like play by yourself for free, but and hopefully that gets you to really enjoy the game, get your friend to play it, and then you both end up buying it because you want to play it with each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's, like a, th that, that, that's a way to do it. It's almost like the crack dealer model. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. That's an actual analogy. Yeah, the idea like the first hit's free, get you hooked, make you pay after. Is that an actual thing, like in real life the, with the like, real crack dealers? Oh, Tom, how's your dealer? <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's like how common is that really? I'm so curious. what what my dealer said is, all right, so we've got a limited hero pool, um, and we're gonna make you play nope. some bot matches. Okay, <laughs> okay, so. Um, <laughs> But once once God you like it, it once you get used course, to it, then you're go. like four hundred dollars deep in cosmetics, and <laughs> all of your free time is being sucked away from a game you really don't like. So I don't have a crack dealer, so I can't really tell you. I just <laughs> uh, that's always what I've heard is a crack dealer model. First hits free, get them hooked, and make them charge the rest. But yeah, um, that that's yeah. It just it feels like a late release to me. For what it is but eh. yeah Power to it's, make more it's games super 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 indie and um you know like like most people with vr really doesn't at least to me it doesn't matter a whole lot what the content is if you're making vr content um i'm probably just gonna buy it <laughs> uh, valve actually because... valve knows this they they have even said i was watching interviews with uh with gabe talking about steam and kind of the industry um and he said People with VR headsets are the best customers you could ask for as a game developer because they understand things are going to be kind of shitty. Things are going to be really, uh, you know, really kind of out there as far as quality goes. And things are going to be not finished. But the VR players understand that and they're going to buy this content because they just want to see more of it. They want to 
support the ecosystem more than anything else. Yeah, it's the idea of, I don't like this game, but if collectively as a community we don't buy it and we do this over and over again, games won't come. Yeah, exactly. Like you, we as a community or a customer base need to prove out that the community is viable for yeah. more games to actually get developed, which is a really fucked up position to be in because I understand that it's effectively asking you throw your money away on some titles. Yeah. But Pretty you much, know, at the yeah. same time, it is literally voting with your wallet. Are are you, you know, gonna tell the developers unless you're building, you know, Half-Life Alex quality content, I'm not gonna buy the game, right? Because then indie devs just really don't have any options, right? They can't get into that market. Or are you saying that, okay, look, I know propagation VR isn't the best game in the world. But I would like to see them continue to experiment here, right? Stress level zero. Hover Junkers. Um, what's the other fucking game they put out? Uh, but Boneworks is one of them. They had something else in there, too. You know, were all of those games perfect? No, not in the least. Did I regret at all throwing my money at them? No. And Stress Level Zero keeps producing really cool and novel VR content because people bought kind of the, you know, more safe stuff that they put out way earlier. But it's also high quality stuff that people were buying. Like Hover Junkers is a high quality game. Mm. Boneworks was a high quality game. It had some issues with some bugs, but it was also because it was super ambitious. Yeah. But you know, uh, I'm I'm okay with subsidizing those indie developers and saying, yeah, I'll keep buying your propagation VRs because I want you to keep playing with this shit. And uh, maybe hopefully one day you'll get me some really cool uh, cool quality content or Maybe, you know, Bethesda will say, oh, wow, maybe we shouldn't have just shit out Skyrim VR. Maybe we should have put more than six minutes of work into actually, you know, developing this thing. Um, because I would I would love to play more games like No Man's Sky in VR, which, yeah, they're a little rough. But for fuck's sake, that's an amazing experience running around a bunch of planets, chilling in a first person perspective. Hell yeah. And that was a secondhand attempt, too. Like, that wasn't. That wasn't mm-hmm. built into the game initial. So, I mean, that's all after. Or or games like uh, like uh, Phasmophobia, right? Where they said, hey, VR is not our, our focus. Our focus is the standard, you know, pancake screen playing a game. But here's this VR mode and maybe somebody would like it. And that's the only way I play that game. Like, it's fucking great. I, I can't stand it. it. It does things to me. And I don't mean <laughs> that. Get the motion the... sickness. Yep. I was going to say, I don't mean that in the good way that can be taken sometimes. Like, I mean that in the literal, like, I can only play a round or two. <laughs> like, it doesn't run great. I've had shit where I've gotten trapped into walls. Mm. Oh, hold on. Hold on. It ain't great. <laughs> well, we, we, we got someone calling out that game is horrible. What? Dave, no. what are you That's doing? That is amazing. <laughs> That's that a one man job. That's fantastic. Literally, one man created that whole game, and it is fucking great. It is the only multiplayer VR shooter to actually scare me. And that's that's one thing to it's say about shooter. Propagation. Thank you. Yeah. I guess it's the only multiplayer uh, horror game um, to scare me. So that's the other thing to mention about Propagation. Propagation VR had jump scares, right, with shit running at you, but it wasn't like scary, scary. Phasmophobia is scary. Uh, it's <laughs> if it was scary, scary, I feel I would be scared most of the time I play it. I think it was scary because of the unknown. Once you drop the veil, it's not as scary. Granted, I haven't played I the think, newest update. I think any game that you put that many hours in, though, yeah, will true that'll wear off. I don't care how scary your game is. If you play it enough, you're going to eventually not be scared by it, I think. I think. I don't know. And it might just take a long time, but I think even a game like Visage or something like that, or PT, like I'm pretty sure if you played a thousand hours of PT, you would be beyond the point of being scared. Yeah. Probably. Uh, But... Anyway, that was, that was a little bit of yeah. a tangent I'm, because I'm gonna hard Dave. disagree with Dave. I'm gonna hard disagree with Dave. Phasmophobia is a goddamn gem, and it's scary, <laughs> and it's a great game. And it you stopped, should buy it now. 
It just gets jump scary. Wait, wait. You watched button. gameplay once. Nah, nah, Dave. Nah. Nah. But, okay. <laughs> no, here I'm we go. Here we go. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how to make this game for Dave. Is if you have to find some resources to make your tools, <laughs> set up some factories to produce those tools, <laughs> then you put them on a bus and you get that bus automatically going to these different houses to de-haunt. Then he's going to be into it. I I am going to gift. I'm going to gift Dave. Phasmophobia. Oh no! You are throwing your money away. I can <laughs> tell you that right now. He's not going to play it. Hey hey! I bought game. I I've spent more money on worse things. I have GameStop stock. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Just because he- Ray shoots my jam. Also, I will say, um, I have been watching uh, Dave stream some on the weekends. Um, Dyson Sphere. I think I talked about it last week. Damn, that game looks good. Fuck, that game looks good. It, it's it's one of those games, like I said, eventually it gets a little nightmares. Mm. This is even more so of, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Like, be it three you days, will play five it days, a month, yeah. I will have that game. So, okay, I should I should ask you, because this, this is also making my, yeah, eventually I'll get this. Is this a short eventually I should get this? this or one, is this, this a... One wait wait for the full release i should get this this looks good this looks damn good right now okay like there will be more content in the full release but this looks fucking good it 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 looks to have like okay factorio is the spirit of it i mean obviously however like there is a lot of quality of life shit in that game that is just so nice like watching him lay those belts and adjust it to different heights, just automatically, God, it just looked good. <laughs> and the fact that it has like some No Man's Sky elements to it was really cool. And he's literally just on a fucking planet. He's like, oh, here, let me go show this other planet with this other resource. Takes his little robot dude, jumps up in the air, and just flies off the fucking planet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, like, I, I can get I'm behind head this. Out. <laughs> yeah, you know, it looks fucking cool. Yeah, he's already at 200 fucking hours and hasn't left that initial system. Jesus. So like you have good, you have solar systems and then you like, you know, solar systems full of form a galaxy. Yeah, so uh, I don't think I should get this game. <laughs> I I'm excited about this. But um not any more about games we haven't played. Adam you yeah. also finished another game this week. Yeah, I finished Observation. Oh my god. It was good. Observation. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. If I would have I think it came out um either 2019 or 2020. Uh if I would have played it, you know, before the year switched over, it would have been probably my favorite game of 2020. Really? Over yeah. Control? Wow. Um uh so man, I don't know. I think control is more fun to play, a lot more fun to play. But I like the narrative of observation way more. Way more. Observation right. isn't actually f- fun to play, really. <laughs> like the, the gameplay itself is the well, weakest part I'm of out. the game. You tell me the game's not the puzzle- fun. I'm done. <laughs> I mean, mechanically. I mean, it's mechanically, it's basically um, like a point-and-click puzzle game, except you can move cameras around, and then there are aspects of there's occasionally some some free movement. Um, but no, I mean, observation is just like it just ticks all of the boxes. It's like they consulted my brain. I'm like, okay, what kind of sci-fi game does this guy like? <laughs> and then I can't I can't list all the things that it has that makes that because that would spoil parts of the game. But I mean, there was just so much about this game that aligns with my personal taste in sci-fi and stuff. And I'm a sucker for anything in space. You know, I'm a sucker for anything with kind of a creepy horror vibe. And of course, the sound design was actually really amazing. And I'm also a sucker for that. So, yeah, observations really really good. <clears throat> I beat it and then like later in the week I watched like more gameplay of it just to like experience it again and watch the ending again and stuff. Wow. 
if you're actually going to rewatch the ending of a game you just beat, yeah, I'd say it's probably pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, what can I say? Uh, well, what can you say? Anything else? Or um, no, I was just <laughs> I thought it was a really well executed, interesting idea for a game with a, a really great story that was was cool. But but what can you say? I can say, um, uh, Battlefield Four is also a good game. Dude, that shocked me to see you launch that. Like, yeah. <laughs> Well, I you mean, okay. Before? Yeah. Actually, it, right. it cut probably a few hours of it now. Um, so uh, <laughs> it stemmed from our good friend Rob, Red Rebel Rob. You know him in the community. And he basically, like, just absolutely strong armed me and forced me to get it. He was like, we were playing some, some Tarkov. And he was like, yeah, I actually played a little bit of Battlefield 4 the other day. I was like, oh, yeah. I never played that game. And he was like, yeah, I think it's like it's like 10 bucks on Steam right now. And that's all he said. But then I bought it immediately. What? So, what an <laughs> just... asshole for him to peer pressure you like <laughs> he that. Was, like, yeah, he was like, well, yeah, I've been playing it. It's been pretty fun. It's $10 on Steam. And I was like, well, I mean, at you that son point, of you a bitch, to, I'm in. Right? <laughs> you son of a bitch. I think yeah. it's also important yeah. to call out. This isn't like Adam doesn't have any history with Battlefield. He no, puts I like some time into Battlefield Three as well. Yeah. No, of like the the big, like, I guess casual, I guess shooters. Uh, Battlefield has always been my favorite. Um, I do like Battlefield I, more than COD. Yeah, I I think they're different, and I enjoy them. They both. are different. Yeah, they're yeah. very they're very to look at them. Someone would be like they're the same fucking game, but they play differently. They the play a lot scale well, of I mean, Battlefield is much larger. Yeah, than Battlefield is much more varied in its gameplay because you have all the vehicles and stuff. But I mean, you can also just do like small map team deathmatch in Battlefield, and it's like Call of Duty, but with Battlefield, you know, visuals and mechanics and stuff. But yeah. no, I'm. I mean, I I've always kind of wanted to play Battlefield Four, but not enough to actually pull the trigger and buy it. Um, but. I wanted to play a Battlefield game, and I didn't want to play Battlefield One more because I wanted something in that in the modern setting. So Battlefield yeah. Four is the most recent game in the Battlefield series that is in just like a regular modern setting. Um, so yeah. Am I the only one that doesn't get excited about old era shooters? It like I mean I can. Uh, if if it is two thousand four and literally everyone and their mother are copying Medal of Honor, <laughs> then World War no, II. absolutely yeah. not. Um, but that said, when Pavlov put out their World War II update and added like thirty some different guns, tanks, and like four new maps, yeah, I was I was pretty fucking hyped for that. It, it really depends on like if I'm bored of that setting. Um, yeah, like, pretty much. When I was playing Call of Duty World War II. Oh my god, I was loving it because I haven't played a World War II game for like probably a fucking decade. Yeah. You um, see, I thought that, and then I realized like I don't like playing with these guns as much though. That's fair. I like having guns are nice. Hollows, yeah, the nice the sights are a huge part, and yeah, that that yeah. was one of the first things I didn't like about Battlefield One. Um, even though there are some optics you can get, sort of. I mean, it is a sort of. I don't know, fantasy. It's like a fantasy version of World War One. Like it's not historically accurate or anything. And there's like some weird sort of steampunkish elements to it too. But um but no, I mean like I, I like like you said, playing with modern guns with you know, modern sights and stuff on them and stuff. Yeah, I think like if you don't like that era of weaponry, I don't think there's anything that could really convince you to enjoy an old sh like a, a shooter set in World War One or World War Two, but yeah. like for me, playing Pavlov with the M1 Garand, and you you know you get like five or six shots. I think it's five. You hear the ping, and then you that's a throw good it sound, here, dude. Like, dude. Oh man, it feels Shing. so fucking good to do that. It feels so fucking good. And then realizing that, oh hey, I can be a sniper. But it's not like the op, right? It's not like, oh, look, I'm just going to lazily throw my crosshair across somebody and pull the trigger, and now they instantly explode. Like, the, the World War II snipers are really fucking difficult to use, so it balances things out pretty well. 
So I, yeah, I, I like, it's not that I don't like the guns of World War II. It's just, it doesn't feel clean to me. I yeah. like a, a clean crispness of modernness, modern games. They can still be grungy and stuff, but like just the gunplay feels cleaner. Oh yeah, no, no. Yeah. World War, like especially from like a VR perspective, it feels like a lot of the, the World War II era guns are just like, hey, how can we pop out the the maximum amount of guns with the least amount of uh, of capital or resources? Because, you know, it's a world fucking war and we need a lot of these things. And that's exactly how they feel. They don't feel like bespoke, perfectly engineered weapons. It feels like, <laughs> hey, is this going to throw hot lead at Hitler, boys? Uh, <laughs> yep, okay, good enough. Okay, I'm going to have to stop you there. Is this going to throw um, hot lead at Hitler, boys? All right. I, 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 that, that's a great quote. But, okay. Um, to step on your toe a little, dude, M1 Grand shoot fucking great. That I've never great, shot one in real life. I've only shot one in VR. I have shot I've, a Mosin in real life, though. I did, too. Are, I shot a Mosin. I, I love the Mosin. I'm actually, uh, My, I saw him in chat earlier, Fandemonious. Uh, he he had one. I don't know if he still has it, but we, oh, got, to, nice. we got to shoot his Mosin at one point. It was fun. Yeah, my buddy had access to an M1 Grand nice. and uh, or Garand, and it was a blast to shoot. And that cling, fuck that happens. And I don't That's know if you're familiar sound. with the nickname. They're called the Thumb Catcher for a reason. That cling is the C clip magazine that gets ejected out the top. So yeah. reload it, you have to push it down. When yep. you push it all the way down, the fucking uh, breach comes forward. It will catch your thumb, and it hurts like hell. Yep. <laughs> Luckily, in VR, it doesn't grab my thumb. <laughs> yep. But no, I, so like I like the guns. It's just I don't like them as much. Mm. Yeah, no, I get that. We actually, uh, I, I think it was Dave and Smiggle and I um, played on a custom map that had like World War II stuff uh, in like one tenth, but you could optionally open up your buy menu and grab all the modern weapons. And what we realized after we were playing with the World War II stuff for a while, like, okay, these are cool, but they are way, way, way less functional than, let me just throw a red dot on top of an M4 and call it a fucking day. Like, mm -hmm. way, way less functional, but that's kind of the point, right? It, it doesn't yeah. feel as good as the modern stuff. So I totally get where you're coming. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, modern, yeah. modern um, battle, uh, Battlefield 4 is cool. You can't use the like find match matchmaking quick match thing anymore you have to go through the server browser but there are oh. still like a decent amount of servers going like you're not going to struggle finding a game at all with low ping or anything well, that that's good at least i like yeah. that they said we're not supporting servers proper anymore with our matchmaking here's a browser yeah, yeah. more games need to do that as an end of life mm -hmm. like i get not wanting to support that feature while you have hosted servers up yeah for sure but if you're taking your hosted servers down you need to fucking put a server browser up there. Yeah. Yep. Especially for a game like Battlefield where you have, you know, 64 players on a map sometimes. Yeah. And I think it helps and too you... that, like I said earlier, that Battlefield 4 is the most recent Battlefield game that's set in the modern time. I think it benefits from that too. So yeah. for the people who don't want to play a World War One or World War Two shooter, they can go two games behind to, I don't know, when, when did Battlefield 4 come out? Like... Like, like seven, or, seven or eight years well, ago or something, probably. 2012, 2013, somewhere in that area. Yeah, somewhere in that area, I think. But um, yeah, it's still it's still tons of fun. I'm noticing now that like playing another shooter after um, only playing Tarkov, and how much like Tarkov has taught me about guns and stuff. Like I recognize. You know, certain types of sights and guns I wouldn't have really paid much attention to before. Like, like right now in Battlefield 4, I'm I'm doing some stuff to try to unlock the AS Val. I didn't know what an AS Val was three years ago. But all of a sudden I'm like, oh yeah, it's that gun from Tarkov. It's got, you know, a suppressed barrel all by default and it shoots really fast. They go burr. Yeah. And it's technically modeled as a sniper or claimed as a sniper. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> Super. Even like so, just attaching like different red dot sites, <laughs> so a lot of them I can tell like, oh yeah, that's the the Cobra site from 
from uh, Tarkov. Or uh, that's an EOTech Hollow site. I recognize that. Adam's getting to be a gun person without being a gun. I'm person. not. Yeah, I just <laughs> I know way more gun parts than I feel like I should, based on the fact that I've I've shot maybe seven or eight guns in my entire life which would account for about 10 to 12 occurrences ever like sessions of shooting guns so i am not experienced with guns at all i'm not a gun guy i don't really care much about guns but i've learned a lot from tarkov tarkov's good there's a reason they had a fucking two segments with an expert breaking down the guns yeah the, and also, uh, I, want to, I want to get to Slugger real quick. Uh, we have already discussed Little Nightmares 2. Yeah. Um, and I'm really loved good. It, though. I loved it. I loved it even more than the first one. Very high recommend. And Battlefield 4 is fun. High recommend on that, too. If you guys want to jump in on it or something, let me know. Yeah. It's like 10 bucks for the like premium edition or whatever that comes with a bunch of DLCs. I'm in. I haven't played a little fun. My God, I'm almost talking down to it. <laughs> I haven't played a, a casual shooter. shooter. Yeah. Yeah. And so long. It's fun. It's like a even good time. when I was doing a quote unquote more traditional shooter, it was rainbow six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is not traditional at all. No, it's but no, but battlefield terrible. is cool because I, I like the variants. Like it's still a casual modern shooter or whatever, but like if you want to, have a huge large scale battle 64 players with a heavy focus on vehicle combat attack helicopters tanks um yeah play conquest if you want to play you know the battlefield version of call of duty play an infantry only small map team death match um if you there's and, and, and everywhere in between map. like there are like medium kind of maps where there's a lot of infantry combat but also a decent amount of vehicles and stuff um, objective-based stuff where you have to capture points or just like a team deathmatch. Like you have all these options and they're all fun. And sometimes it is absolute chaos because you have all these people on a map sometimes. Um, I was playing, it wasn't team deathmatch. It was like objective focused, but it was infantry only. And there were like 48 people on a kind of small map. I mean, you get to the point in the game where there's these choke points. And people are just piling into these like hallways and shooting each other. It gets, it gets really crazy, but it's good fun. And and they you do that thing be. that that I always liked about Call of Duty and and really all the those types of shooters have it is the unlock system is really addicting. Yes. Right. You have a couple of guns per class that you can use right off the bat. No attachments or anything. Keep using the gun. Oh, you unlock a red dot, a red dot sight for that gun. Cool. Use it a little bit more. Oh, now you've got like an ACOG, you know, zoomed optic. Um, play the engineer class enough. Oh, cool. Now you have access to this gun. And you can play that gun to get the sights and the attachments for that gun. Like there's always something to be uh, unlocking and doing. And, you know, you get you get to the end of the match and it shows you all like the combat ribbons you get and the XP bars going up for various things. You like your character level, and then your level with the class that you're playing, and the level with the gun that you have, and then it, it individually shows you everything. You unlock that match, and it's just like, okay, go ahead and trigger all of the dopamine systems in my brain right now, <laughs> and <laughs> let's let's roll it back. Let's do another one, man. I'm trying to get this AS Val. So that felt good. Let's go again. Yeah, exactly. Like I was just gonna check it out, like for ten bucks. I'll probably play it once or twice, maybe three times. And I, I have found myself like playing it actually a lot the past couple of days. I think I've played a few hours. Nice. You might have just talked me into it because, man, I haven't played one in a while. And oh, I man. remember playing Battlefield 3. Yeah. Battlefield 3 was a lot of fun. Battlefield 3 was great. That was a good time. That was my first Battlefield game, I think. I preferred it over the mo or the CODs at the time. But also because yeah, though, I do like big battles. Mm -hmm. Like Mag was my fucking jam on the PS3. Yeah. Mag was cool. Love that shit. 124 or 128 versus 128 battles where everyone has classes and you have different fucking squadrons that have to be different objectives all on the same team. Mm -hmm. Sign me the fuck up. <laughs> However, also a uh, mm -hmm. great example of a game that didn't fully explain what it was to people and lots of parents bought that without having online. Because that Jesus. bitch was online only. Boy. So I, uh, 
this this is kind of kind of related, but I kind of find it weird that when I needed to learn how to reload the the big ass LMG in Pavlov, I looked up a YouTube video of some guy reloading that big ass LMG in real life, and then I just did that stuff in the game, and it worked. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I don't really have any context or, or commentary on it. It was just kind of different. Uh, something for you, Tom. Um, so the same gu gun expert that did the Tarkov stuff, mm -hmm. they had him do a video for Horseshoes Hand Grenades or Hot Dogs Hand oh, Grenades. Yeah. I'll have to watch that. I haven't one. watched it yet, but I know that they had him do one for that too. I love that. dude that seems stuff. cool. I saw a YouTube comment that was like, this guy is the type of guy you just want to sit down and have a beer with. And I was like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> he seems like he would be a fun dude. Also, first time we played this map, got to call it out. This map is gorgeous. New map from I the new. Oh. When did this come out? So pretty. Uh, with the uh, lantern update. Because the lantern event's going on right now. Oh, wait. Wasn't there another map kind of like this before? Yeah. Was, is this, forbidden, is this night. forbidden Temple? Yes. I think it's daytime Forbidden Temple. Oh, okay. brighter. I just haven't seen the colors daytime. Colors pop more. Gotcha. Uh, but anyway... Um, anyone else have any other games that they played? Not I think really. that's that's all of my games, which was uh, if four you... games. That's a lot for me, especially because I beat two of them. Yeah, no shit. I think the only Where thing I've got is a, a PSA. If anybody would like to uh, request Beat Saber songs uh, of any difficulty, um, jump into the Discord. Because I'm there almost every day, dancing away. Dancing Tom. And Changes his name and Discord and everything. Yep. For those interested, what you do is effectively you just pop up his stream. We typically just pop it up, listen to it, and do what we're doing anyway. And he just plays the songs that you want to hear. Yep. Works real well. <laughs> He's your DJ that is sweating his ass off to be your DJ. Dancing DJ. <laughs> A DDJ. Anyway. Um, shall we get to some news? No. All right. In that case, I mean, we, no. Um, uh, so no. Um, news is canceled this week. Yep. Oh, well, fuck. Can I at least talk about how Kingdom Snow. Hearts is coming uh, to PC finally? No. Oh, that's cool. No. I'm sure that'll make so a lot I of people can't bring happy. Up that so I can't bring up it's going to be exclusive to Epic? It's no. going to make a lot of people unhappy. Okay. But no, so I mean, that's... there's There's a few really big franchises that have been locked on consoles for a long time slowly some of them are making their ways over like halo the most notable recent gears of war here's a big one finally we're getting kingdom hearts on ps or off ps and on the con or pc off yeah of, i can't yeah. speak off of playstation and off um, of pc this isn't all of them because there were some that were like handheld games and whatnot how many but are this there is how many are kingdom Hearts games are there 107 six, six or seven yeah keep <laughs> in they have arbitrary names like Kingdom Hearts 365 over 2 and bullshit like that. <laughs> so um, this it's is, also, I believe, uh, 1, 2, and 3. I don't think it does any of the side ones that are coming to PC. It's okay. also one of the so, most confusing games when it comes to narrative. Yes. I've heard that My buddy well. had bought 3 and watched a half-hour YouTube video trying to explain the storyline up to there. And was still lost beyond belief and just returned the game. <laughs> like, didn't even play it. He just, like, tried to recap on one and two and was like, ah, nope. No, he tried to play it okay. after the recap. And it still just didn't make sense. Oh, Jesus. So he's like, nah, dog, I'm out. Which is a shame because, <laughs> I mean, this game was anticipated for so long. So, so long. But, yeah, yeah it's coming to PC, which it's kind of cool. More people might get exposed to it. It is a good franchise. It's been highly talked about. A lot of people like it. It's a hack and slash that the Final Fantasies eventually kind of made their way to. So it it's, it's a like good time. Final I Fantasy this... meets like Disney. Disney. Yeah. 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 Is Cloud in the game? Yeah. Uh, he's a he's in one or two. So of you got like but, Cloud um, and Goofy and. Donald Duck for some reason. And quack, quack. I don't know. I never played any of them. I just. Gina loves them. Dobby's a huge fan of them. Dobby played a lot of them. 
But yeah, I mean, they're good games. Um, I don't know if I'll be getting it, but hey, if you like hack and slashes, if you love Disney property and you like hack and slashes, this is definitely for you. If you've ever wanted a Final Fantasy esque Disney game, <laughs> it's that's literally. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're calling this Final Fantasy Ask. I want to be clear. This is not like FF play like, like, like one, one through one through twelve or one through ten, I should say. This is a real time hack and slash. Yeah. So it's not turn based. It's what the modern Final Fantasies are. Not the Final Fantasies of old. Anyway. Um so Tom, I'll let you kind of take over the next three because I only read one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it till the end. I know. Well, I, I mean, how dare one of these fucking podcast hosts joins the call with literally nine minutes before the show starts. It's like, oh, hey, guys, we're going to put in news. Fucking dumbass. Yeah, it was me. I did that. <laughs> it's okay, Tom. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, Terraria for Google Stadia is now canceled. Um, so the uh, the lead developer behind Terraria, apparently several, several, several weeks ago, something happened and his personal Google account got locked. Now, this happens, you know, I, I don't want to say decently often, but it does happen where Google's automated systems will do something and say, oh, no, we think you're a bot or you're spam. I've actually had it happen to mine before, even though I've had my account for like 15 fucking years. Um, and they say, oh, you can't send email or you can't do anything. Apparently, they just goddamn locked his entire account. Like Whoa. Google Drive, Gmail, oh everything completely inoperable. And it had stayed that way for three weeks, even though he's on Twitter. He made it to the front page of Hacker News. He's like, please, can a human just tell me if this is an automated fuck up or if there's a reason for this lock? So if there's a reason for the lock, fine. But, you know, I've had this account forever. I don't think I've done anything. What happened? So nobody nobody at Google got in touch with him at all. Oh, wow. Just weeks. And so uh, so he tweeted, you know, it's now three weeks since my Google account's been locked out. And uh, apparently Google doesn't care about its customers. So uh, shouldn't care about their partners either, right? Terraria is now canceled on Stadia. And within minutes, he got uh, a tweet from the one of the people running Stadia. And they're like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. Let me <laughs> let me tweet some stuff internally and get back to you and figure this out. It's like, you motherfuckers. Um, yeah, so it, it doesn't sound like he's going to reciprocate at all. No, nah, Terraria is still going to be, be canceled. Did they, and, did they contact I, the, I, the five dudes that were going to play it on Stadia to see what they thought about the whole thing? Yeah, they, they probably should. Like, I, think- I was going to say, the fact that they're putting it to Stadia, I think it's more of an indictment on Stadia. Dude, I love Terraria, but that shit's not new. Like, it's not even close to being not old. The shit's yeah. old. It's, it's still good, good. But it's, it's still old. a great game, yeah. But Yeah. But yeah, but uh, so Google, I don't know. Fuck Stadia. Um, I mean, St- Stadia's dying. Everyone knows it. It's it's not yeah. even a quiet death at this point. Stadia is dying. Yeah. Uh, funnily yeah. enough, when Google was showing off Stadia, like if you look at what they were doing out of context, they're trying. Right, let me explain what they did. So when they were first showing off Stadia, they had the Stadia controller sitting there next to, like the Virtual Boy and the Power Glove and like a bunch of like just abject fucking gaming failures and they're like look these people were so ahead of their time that they failed and we're going to be so ahead of our time but we're not going to fail but the only thing it shows is look here's all this failed gaming shit and yet another thing that's just going to be failed gaming shit you had the foresight to identify that these guys came out too early acknowledge that you're coming out too early and somehow (laughs) expect to be different (laughs) it's like come the fuck on I don't, I don't get it. I just don't fucking get it. Yeah. And I mean, this is also right on the heels of the Oya. Oh yeah. As well. Like, Oya. Yeah. okay, whatever. The, oh, the yeah. massive fuck up that had like lawsuits going on around it in a similar fashion. So, I mean, like, I don't know what they were thinking. It just failed. That's all we got to know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, CD Projekt Red. Um, Apparently, Netwatch was not on their side, and uh, some Netrunners have decided to solve one of the shitty little puzzles and get into their corporate infrastructure. 
So they were hit by a ransomware attack. More than that, though, the hackers claim to have stolen a lot of source code, including an unreleased version of The Witcher 3, the source code for the released version of The Witcher 3, and all of the source code for Cyberpunk 2077. The best take I've seen on this so far is somebody on Twitter saying, so the fuck what? They got the CP2077 source code. Are they threatening to fix it? Like, what the hell are you going to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> Which, A, rude. B, such a good I take. agree. <laughs> I totally agree. It's such a good take. <laughs> I'm, I'm halfway expecting something like, or is it even legible? Be the yeah. kind of question about the source code. <laughs> well, well it's, uh, it's three highlights magazines in, uh, in some watercolor. Um, we, we got nothing else. <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, yeah. Um, okay. I will say this. CD Projekt Red is handling this perfectly. So one of the things that companies incorrectly do when they get hit by these cyberware attacks is they, uh, they say, oh, no, we're going to pay you a bunch of money. Oh, but please don't hack us again because you know that we're not going to. Oh, wait, no, we are going to totally pay you a bunch of money. And it just incentivizes these crooks to keep hacking these people and keep getting paid for it. If you don't pay them and you say, fuck you, we don't negotiate with terrorists, then hopefully maybe one day they lose interest. Um, so CD Projekt Red did everything perfect. They said, hey, here's exactly what they're threatening. Here's what they told us they stole. We're recovering everything from backup. We're not giving them a dime. Um, and yeah, by the way, this happened. And sorry. Uh, nobody's personal information was stolen. Nothing like that. Uh, That's but good. they were super honest and transparent, really upfront when it happened as soon as they knew. So, you know, as a company, yeah, they responded to this really fucking well. Uh, they hired some, uh, some forensic security people to go in and check stuff out. So yeah, sucks that that happened, but honestly, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot that's going to come out of this. Which is good. Like yeah, this yeah, turning into a no news story is the best thing that can happen. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. And you know, and if, a close second is they fix the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess the one thing I could see happening, like if the hackers release the source code, right. There's going to be people reporting on what they find in it. We could see people saying, Oh, Hey, you know, this is the, the commented out section of cyberpunk 2077's code that actually, you know, has all the features that were missing. And we can see by these date stamps that, you know, Almost everything was uncom or like commented out the week before the game released. Clearly, they needed to finish this and they didn't. But that's that's the only thing. Maybe it gives modders like some more insight into how the game actually works. But that uh, would be the best thing that could come out of it yeah. is the fact that you you could end up with some sweet fucking mods because yeah. they'll be exploiting things they shouldn't know about. Exactly. Or but that's know, said, bug fix know, mods. Yeah, exactly. That's really, really what I'm excited about. It's that if somebody reads the source code and they say, oh, hey, look at this thing. Clearly, that's why I T-pose pantless whenever I get on my motorcycle. Which, by the way, pantsless T-posing is a bug I encountered several times throughout my playthrough. That's or a decent feature, exposure, honestly. Feature I encountered uh, several times throughout my playthrough. I have never ran into, I never ran into T-poses. I saw really? one, like, almost immediately in the game <laughs> yeah i i saw t posing all the time the the main issue for me was being pantsless like imagine if i was streaming this shit and like all of a sudden my dude is butt ass naked riding on a motorcycle i'm like broadcasting on twitch like all right not really There's wanting to get a terms of service violation here but uh there we go there was and a streamer that kind mode of wasn't shit, there can you there trust was it? A streamer mode. yeah exactly i, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> <laughs> probably not given given the state of the rest of the game i i would not be uh the first in line to trust streamer mode uh but either way it yeah. is what it is they got the source code uh big deal so so uh adam is a big fan of this next story uh nvidia's dlss that basically uses machine learning to make your games prettier make them run better render them at technically a lower resolution but blow it up big and then use machine learning to fill in the details um it can make good games look great and if your pc isn't the best it can allow you to play shit that you really shouldn't be able to play 
So uh, it's, yeah, it's what it's basically the only. Um, it's like the only technology that both increases performance and visuals at yeah. the same thing. You're not sacrificing one for the other, which is pretty wild, honestly. It, it, it's a little bit of a paradox because that, yeah. that's typically not possible. That's not how things work ever yeah, until now. Exactly. <laughs> it's fucking nutty. So um, uh, NVIDIA DLSS has been released as a plugin on the Unreal Engine marketplace. Now, what this means is before game companies had to actually be like put on an allow list to use NVIDIA DLSS. It was a fully private, you cannot use this unless you partner with NVIDIA to make it work. But now it's just a plugin for the Unreal Engine. Literally anybody who wants to use the Unreal Engine, which is anyone, because it's a free engine until you make like a bunch of money. And at that point, you don't care about paying license fees. But mm -hmm. anyone using that game engine today, just go in, download the DLSS plugin, and get to making your games look prettier. Um, so, yeah, we're going to see a whole lot more DLSS for uh, at least Unreal Engine games. I'm and fucking excited about that. That's pretty cool. They, yeah, They did it right, it was, though, because they didn't open it to everyone at first, so they made sure people's first Make sure the technology is good, yeah. Make sure it yeah. has Yes, a... they did it with games that they worked with, and they knew it was going to work, so people would get good buzz. Because yeah. we know there's going to be or games that do this, and it's not going to do shit. Mm-hmm. Mm I think this is going to be really cool. I'm curious to see how many games that are already released that are going to update and have the DLSS update, you know, oh, added man. DLSS support to whatever, you know, Unreal game that's been out for a while. And I, and also, I, too, I, like for, for new, I don't want to say new, but like inexperienced devs that put out games that don't run that well because they're not super well optimized, like having that option to maybe enable the DLSS plugin and train and train the whatever AI or however that you know is actually implemented into the game, um, it could be an option for for people who have trouble running a game that isn't optimized super awesome. Throw DLSS on, and you know maybe it's it'll run at a acceptable rate for them. And then everyone running AMD cards is going to return the game. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I think AMD is working on the same. Yeah, their, their version of it. Already. Yeah, they so, have to. Technology. This yeah, is they, the they only have thing to, yeah. right now that gives NVIDIA a leg up because AMD has the price point with the same performance. They just don't have the software right now. Uh, I'm going to disagree on graphics cards. And, and really, the biggest problem with graphics cards right now is you just can't fucking buy any. <laughs> but no, I, from a pure technology perspective nvidia has kind of always been better uh well, in my the, mind the new amds are benchmarking the same for okay. 800 dollars less can you buy them though no i mean it's a graphics card <laughs> don't get you a fucking 790 is about the only thing you're going to get on the market these days even even that eh. i have a 560 ti for sale if anybody's interested uh i've got a 760 Hold on. Where the fuck do you have a... When did you get that? What? A 760? No, a 570 Ti? F like... A 560 Ti, I think. Like, that would be like 2008? 2007? Yeah. yeah. Damn. That's an old-ass card. I remember <laughs> trying to run Crisis 1 on it. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's an old card. I don't know why I still have it. But it's there. If, you, if anybody wants to buy it, three hundred dollars. That's steel with current market. <laughs> yeah, kind of is. That's the sad part. Well, um, that's the that's the fresh or anything. The AMD cards are really well priced, yeah. but no one sees that price because all the fucking bots buy them and they go aftermarket. Yep, it's obnoxious. I'm it's still like, planning on buying a graphics card when I can buy it from like you know a store and not some <laughs> asshole on ebay trying to make rent yeah money. oh yeah i'm kind of curious what i could sell my card for at this point i'm running still the old og 1080 msi you could probably I'm sell it for what you bought it for when it was new uh, yeah most likely well, a few months after i bought it is when the bitcoin craze really picked in for them buying all the 1080s mm -hmm. in my card i bought it for 800 dollars. i could have sold it used for 1200 yeah, 
I just wouldn't have had a graphics card, and I was like, eh, it's not really worth it. Yeah. But it was an option because so, it's fucking crazy. I feel bad on, for anybody on. trying to build a PC right now or like their first gaming PC or something. Like that sucks. Oh, yeah. Horrible time. Horrible time to be building a PC. Um, and I don't think I've ever said that before, but it's a horrible time. Yeah. Unless you got a buddy with a card that's not going to price gouge you for it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, to say, Tom? On, on this, on the DLSS uh, plugin release, I really, really hope that NVIDIA also pushes one for Unity. Um, not only because, yeah. you know, that's uh, typically Unreal is used more in like AAA and more professional environments. Unity is kind of used for everything else. Um, not to say that there aren't AAA games built in Unity, but that it's more popular with indie devs. Well, that, um, I think that's a legacy construct that might get broken away a little bit now, though. Yeah. Since the last few years, they've reworked the licensing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would really love to see uh, this DLSS stuff get thrown into something like Tarkov. Uh, but Tarkov <laughs> Which is, needs oh, it. <laughs> yeah. Tarkov desperately needs it. Um, but it's in Unity. So uh, I don't know, let's, let's hope. Which is also in fucking incredible. That yeah. Tarkov runs in Unity. I mean, Unity's but, a, a fine engine. There is nothing wrong with Unity. It's that just, is the biggest game I know of running in Unity. Uh, then you haven't been paying attention. There's a shit ton of games running in Unity. Anything bigger than Tarkov? Yeah. I need to look up the, the list, but yeah. Several. It does see AAA use. Just not as much as Unreal. Oh. I get it. See, AAA use Tarkov's bigger than a lot of AAA games. <laughs> that's a that's a good point. Like that game's a monster, and it performs like it's a fucking monster too. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, it's cool tech. I would love love to see it get to Unreal or Unity. I'd also really like for AMD to get it that way. It's not making the market really fucking weird. Mm -hmm. But that's on them. Um. So, anyone have anything else? Closing thoughts, arguments, not arguments because we're not arguing, but thoughts. I'm arguing. I would, like to, I would like to have an argument. I disagree. I also disagree. I disagree with your disagreement. Remember that Monty Python sketch with the um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, the, the argument, argument booth dinner. I love <laughs> it. it was like a dinner table where they had like a menu of arguments they can have. <laughs> wait, wait. I I just paid you to have an argument. No, you didn't. Yes, was I that... did. You didn't. <laughs> oh, I see. We're having the argument now. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> Dude, oh, some so uh, Monty Python skits are so good. They really are. Some of them are so stupid, but they're so good. <laughs> Have you seen the cheese shop? The cheese no. shop is fucking great. This guy walks in. It's just like, oh, uh, can I get some cheddars? Oh, sorry. Fresh out. No cheddar. Oh, uh, do you have any brie? Nope. No brie, unfortunately. Parmesan? Oh, sorry, just ran out. Like, he keeps naming normal fucking cheeses, and it goes on for, like, ten minutes. But this cheese shop just doesn't have any normal fucking cheese. It's great. It's amazing. You should watch it. That was such an anticlimactic story. Yeah, I was, I was I was waiting on <laughs> to be like, yep, yeah, but, don't have but do you have cheese. a 15-year a aged uh, sheep's milk cheese aged in bourbon barrels? Uh, soaked in wine for three and a half years. Nope. Sorry, oh, yeah. just right now. And then him be like, oh, yeah, it's right over here. <laughs> of course, of course. Yes, of course. No, yeah, um, exactly. But I think that's why I love this game. It's because it was anticlimactic. There was nothing there. There absolutely wasn't. But anyway, um, I think that's all we got this week then. Correct? Yeah. All right. Well, in that case little rundown for uh, those of you watching us on Twitch. Thank you. Uh, we have YouTube where we put all of our podcasts or some other stuff there you could always watch at 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you. But we are live every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. You can come into the twitch.tv slash 72 Pin Connector. Watch us play some Rocket League, have our cast, be part of the conversation, snipe our game lobbies. It's a grand old time. Um, we have a Twitter, 72 PC underscore official. Uh, a lot of Rocket League news goes up there whenever we do stuff. And yeah, just it's there. Uh, we have a Discord. That's probably the best part about us. 
we have a great fucking community lots of different games lots of different people very active jump in be part of the fun it's a great time great people and if you're wondering well how do i get there you didn't give me a url well you go to 72 picknector.com and you get everything including some merch buy our merch and with that i think that's all we got for you guys this week so till next week game on goodbye